But now, Rob Peace. Now, that's the big thing, because that's, that's what's immediately coming up. Yeah. Who called you to do that? When did that happen? I know you said you, start, you stopped uh, filming a year ago. When did that, that process start from the absolute inception, or conception? Man, all right. So this is crazy. I, um, this film was supposed to be done like 2000. Now, you're getting some real tea here, man. You get some. This film was supposed to be done before pandemic. There was another guy that was up for the character that I played, Rob. Pandemic happened. He started to age. He started to look a little bit older. Rob was, I don't know if I'm the youngest looking guy, but I don't look that old, you know, especially when I cut my hair. Yeah, of course. And so they had to let, they had to, you know, choose another, op- to choose another option. And they, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to figure out what my next role is going to be. My manager emails me the script, um, the tragic life of Robert Peace of the book. It's like, they're auditioning for this. You, you will love it. Da, da, da. I'm like, all right, give it a shot. I'm looking at it. Read it. I was like, yo, this guy here is like me coming from South Carolina and going to like Juilliard. Him, he, he, we had a lot of similarities, a lot of personal things that was never like, nobody knows. For instance, his, his first name was Deshaun. My middle name is Deshaun. Uh-huh. Spelled, I don't think the same way, but it sounds the same way. And I'm, um, I took that. I was like, hmm, this is an interesting omen. <laughs> so I read it. Immediately, I was, I was, I was, man, I, I, it was, it transcended me, man. It, it shook me up, man. It was, it was new. It was, it was a story like that needed to be told, like that we haven't seen yet before. We, we've seen outcomes similar to it. <laughs> However, like, we haven't seen this one yet in this way. And, so I sent the audition back. I don't know if it was like a week or so afterwards. I got the um, invitation for a callback to Shoot Cell. And um, we did one-on-ones. And he was like, yeah, we want We would love for you to come and do the role. And I was like, I would love to do the role. Yeah. But the thing that really shook me up was um, the fact that this was a real living guy. Mm-hmm. Like, I never played like a guy who was a real, like, was really here, you know, and like, passed away you know got slain you know and so i i I found like i figured there was a lot of sensitivity around his existence with his family and everything so i was like let me honor that let me like try to figure out how i can like who are the who is his family are they cool with this they feel are they fun do they even know this movie's gonna go down so i did some of my personal research found his family found his brother found his mom and everything out in jersey where the film was was shot I um I asked if I can come over and let them just speak with them about get get permission, just talk. So I wanted to get permission to see if I could play the role because I felt like, yo, man, like, you know, this is your son. You know, I want I really want to honor him and I want to ask him. So I, I'm sitting on his couch. I'm sitting on this childhood couch, man. I'm sitting in his childhood home. You know, and I walked in there and I'm voice was shaking and I was so nervous, hands sweating, and I was like, hey, I I feel like I um. I'm nervous right now, but I really, I really want to have the opportunity to bring, um, to give a voice to your son's story. You know, and I, I don't know if they Paramount or anybody asked you if they could do anything like this, but you know, uh, I wanted to just, you know, come up and ask you and look you in your eyes and see if this is okay for me to do because you know, it's, I want to respect the circumstances of it all, but. Um, if you're willing for me to do this, you know, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to be honest and tell the truth and everything and the best of my ability. And she never said, yeah, they never said no, you know, but you know, it was just like a thing of like, Hey man, I don't, I can really move back off this right now, but whoever's going to fulfill this, they probably not going to knock on your door and ask you to do this. So I just want to let you know, you know, and eventually they started calling me back. Like, yeah, you know, you know, they never said yeah, but it was it was indirect. Like, so how, how's it going? And like, <laughs> oh. I was like, ah, right. you know. So eventually, man, and they they were really there, man. But it, it was it's a it's a real near and dear thing to them, and I wanted to really honor that, respect it, because it's a real living soul. It was a real living soul, you know. It's got to be kind of difficult when you're in a role where you have so many similarities with someone. Yeah. It, which, you know, you think, oh, that makes it easier. I can connect with it easier. But when you're portraying someone real, 
is it a little more difficult to say, I am so connected to this person, but at the same time, you don't want to be Jay Will, you want to be them. So you have to kind of yeah. adopt the things that are similar, but then not get into the habit of saying, you know, try to get separated from the fact that, that it's you, you know? Yes, man. And it's a real thing, man. And it's, a, it's an energy exchange, which you bring up, you know, you're really allowing yourself to be. So Raji P. Henson talks about this all the time and just how spiritual this is, this is, man. You allow this character to, to, you know, to have a position and an opinion about themselves through you. And you have no type of, you have, you have to stay neutral. But most of the time, this is really just, um, this cra crayons that we already have in our own pack, you know, <laughs> like I was, for instance, there were like pictures of, uh, you know, the way the original Rob sat in Brazil on the steps that we shot. And I tried to sit that same way. And Tua tells like, all right, don't do all that. Like we can chill a little bit, like just sit how you want to sit. So there's a balance to it. You know, you want to, you don't want to over, you don't want to overdo it. But because in the end of the day, it's really your story too. It's like you, you're trying you're letting them know your story too through their story, you know, mm -hmm. though it's, it's, it's factually and everything, but you're the one who's given it. You're, you're the vessel. You have the well of experience personally to make it, to make it real. So there was, there is a balance, man. There is a balance, but I did deal with a lot of like emotional turmoil with this one, man, because I really felt like, uh, I started to really experience the things that I don't know what Rob, what he was going through during the last quarter of the last quarter of his life man i don't know but the things that were implied in the script man the paranoia the like sadness the heartbreak the resentment for family and disappointment i really took that in i really allowed that to really work inside of me and really work inside of me man and, and, and i paid a price yo i paid a price because it was it wasn't mine it, they, they aren't my heartbreaks they aren't my paranoias they aren't but I allowed it to be real, yeah. you know, and I had to go to my home and bring that there, you know, and I had to go back to set and eventually, man, it all crashed down, man. I had nights where I would be like, I didn't know how I would get back the next day, the workload, you know, I'm getting big page monologues the day of, barely memorize what, what we about to work on, 10 minutes till we shoot. It got crazy, you know, but I had to allow myself to be like, you know, this is the best I got and I'm gonna come with it. And it's gotta be good training for the fact that you know, at the end of the day, art aside, you are working on a professional set. So you have to be able to give as good of a performance as possible, be as in it as possible, but on the schedule of any other business. So having that practice of having to be able to take a role like this that's so deep and so mm. tough to do, but get it done on a schedule. You know, if you can do something like this and get that done, you know, that's, that's, Man, this was that's a like test, a bro. crazy practice. This was this was a crazy practice, and the biggest part of it all it was the clearing out, the allowing this to be like, all right, you know, it's this wasn't now. my story. It's done now. It's done now. When they call cut, cut, <laughs> cut it off emotionally. Like I meant, like it, and it was like a, a set stage that they like built up. Like we were at real location. Yeah. We were at real grave sites. We were at real like, real like really on the street in in his neighborhood. Like. You know, people who are who really knew Rob was out there watching the film be done. You know, it was really intense, man. It was really intense, man. But it was it was nothing that I couldn't handle, yo. But it, 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 I can't wait to see it. <laughs>